Good morning and welcome here in my busy little shop. Today I'm going to work on making a two layer hand stitched leather belt. Uh, the belt I'm making today I refer to as the Western and uh, you saw a picture of that on the beginning of the video. And I start off, I, I cut my own leather straps. I keep them organized in a box here by width. And my goal is to have a belt that is between 10 and 12 ounce leather. Uh, 12 ounces, like 3 sixteenths of leather as a completed belt. And I do this as a two layer belt. The two layers as opposed to one layer of the same thickness of, of leather is actually stronger because you've got the top grain twice, one on the front, one on the back. So it makes an extremely durable belt. So I'm gonna do a little bit of limited talk on this, but I'm starting off, I've got two straps here uh, to make an inch and a half belt. So I'll get started on it here and I'll just uh, chime in here and there. The first thing is figuring out the length of the belt. And this one's a 42 inch belt. This is the belt that's being made uh, for the winner of my belt giveaway that I recently did. And I'll start off with, uh, this strip's about a 60 inch strip that I cut out of a side of leather. And I'm gonna cut it to length and I'll cut it 10 inches longer than what is uh, required for the belt. So it's a 42, so I need a 52 inch strip. And I want to keep track of which end is the uh, butt end of the hide because that's where it's the strongest. And uh, what I'll do to keep myself oriented right is I'll cut the curve for the, uh, the buckle end of the belt first. And that way I always stay correct. I don't end up swapping ends on it. The tip end of the belt, I will cut that uh, once I have the two layers layered up. That way I have a nice, clean, matched end on that. So I just add an extra half inch to the end of it and cut that. And then I'm going to go ahead and dye this piece. This will help me with my uh, belt loop on the project. And then uh, I can make other things out of that dyed piece of leather. The next thing is to lay out the pattern for the uh, stitches that are in the middle of the belt. And to do that, I'm going to um, find the center of the belt. So 42 inches is the distance between the bend and the hole used, the hole that is to be used on the belt, 42 inches. So what's half of 42? It's 21, so 21 from the bend gives me the center of this design. And then I will lay out the stitch holes from that.
and I just check to make sure that from the end of this pattern to the stitch stitches or the uh, sorry from this end of the pattern to the whole use that I've got basically the same amount and I think I'm one off one two three four on this side of the pattern one two three yes I was wondering why I was off there that's why I check it just to make sure this this there's a lot of work that goes into this belt before you get to the layered up belt and once you get it layered up, if you made a mistake, it's it's not possible to fix it, not make it look right. So I have started over before. I just use this swing divider to put my uh, lines to follow with my stitching chisels. side as well. Okay. I start in the middle. There's three stitches worth, or sorry, there's three stitching chisels worth of uh, stitching in each one so I center this center one on the center hole. Lots of centering there. First tying in the last hole. Skip the half inch I have measured here. Start the next one there. Why did I uh, fold it back and then measure from the bend instead of just adding or subtracting the difference of the bend from it? There's a guy I work with some in the summer, pretty smart guy. He says, take the math out of it every chance you get because you may make a mistake in the math. So that's why I do it the way I do. So then uh, to make sure these are lined up, I'll just put a square up against it here. Let's put the stitch, it, the chisel in the holes, put the square against it, come to the other side, and then make sure that I'm on the line. And that way those two sides are lined up. And it, sometimes it's, it's a little bit hard to tell with these diamond chisels because of the angle. It kind of throws your eye off a little bit, tries to fool you. So that's the reason why I do it the way I do. Yep, I have to do that every time I skip over the, the space. You can remeasure that half inch on there, but it really shows if you're off.
All right, I've got the holes done here. Now, on this belt, I did the holes before I dye this belt. And part of the reason why I do that is this pattern calls for a faded mahogany, which the way I generate the faded mahogany look is the holes and the edge tend to make the dye take quicker than the spaces between it. So it fades between one and the other. Yep, I dip dye, and I dip dye because it's uh, a more consistent color for me. It does use more dye, there's no doubt. So you've added uh, more expense to it, there's, that's for sure. I'm reusing a bottle. This is not the dark brown. This is a mix that I make myself. Yep, a funnel would be better. Somebody asked me where I hang my belts while they're drying between dye and um, clear sealer and such. And I used a, a rake head that I bent up every other time. And works pretty well for me. Now you might ask, why do you start with one layer and do the center stitching? And the reason why I do that is I move from one row of stitches over this bare spot here. There's no stitches showing on the front. I do that on the back and then I continue on. And I don't want a bunch of back stitches in here, uh, short runs of thread. This is all one thread down each side. And I need to hide that on the back. I guess you could go through and do that on the back of the belt, but I, I would think that would be, well, I wouldn't like the look of it. To me, it would be ugly to do it that way. And then how I prepare the leather before this stitching depends a little bit on the color of the thread I'm using. I'm using black and I do this also with white and with white you have to worry about the dye transferring onto the thread and discoloring the thread and because of that I will have to seal it and treat it before I do the stitching. So the top coat would get the top would get the first coat of sealer before I do the stitching on it. And once I have this center stitching done, then I glue up and laminate the two layers. So this one goes through that way, and then from the back, the other one comes through in the next uh, group or bay of stitching, and then we can continue on. And that, like I said, allows me to, um, I think, make a much cleaner looking pattern on this belt. Once again, I refer to this as the Western.
All right, so I've got the, the stitching is completed down the center. It will have spots between these segments of stitching. So right now I'm going to go ahead and glue up and layer up this belt. So I use the uh, Weldwood contact cement and I will put two coats on the back of each one of those. And then once the uh, adhesive is set up and is just tacky, not wet any longer, then we'll laminate those together. You can see the stitches here on the back side of the top coat of leather. That will obviously get sandwiched in between and locks all those threads in place and hides that, that stitch work. Obviously the stitch work along this edge as you'll see, but they, uh, just because of the way I do these stitches, I like having it sandwiched between the two layers. So I've got this glued up. I failed to mention I skived down the end of this belt, this is the fold over where the buckle's at. It's full thickness on this where the buckle is gonna ride, three and a half inches in. So it's got strength there, but I taper this down a little bit so that when we get down uh, to where this is full backs underneath the other belt, it's not as thick. And I, I skive it there and I skive it on the, the lining as well. I've still got eight ounces of leather by the time I get that sandwich together. So there's still a lot of strength there, but I do that. It just gives it to me a little cleaner look. So I start on this fold back part of the belt on both of these pieces here. And then the other thing that I do is, is I will, this is three and a half inches in, don't touch that cause it'll stick. I create a little bit of that bend back when I do it because if you don't, it wrinkles this lining leather. So I'll start it here. I get it like that and you can see, and then, then I just bring this piece over and line it up. And to make sure that they're bonded well to each other, you can tap it down with the hammer like this. It doesn't take a big impact to make sure the two areas are bonded. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll just run it down the center here. A few hits to kind of stitch it in place. And then I will use my burnisher and burnish this down and those two pieces of leather are not going to come undone from each other now. Next, I'm going to trim off the liner even with the face of the belt. That's kind of an easy process. I'll get started here showing you what I'm doing and then I'll cut away. But I'm just going to get here lined up along the edge and push as hard down as you want, but don't make it too hard to pull the knife. Um, it's easier to come back through a second time if needed following that previous cut. The blade kind of wants to follow it anyway. And then I'll have both layers cut off side by side. One of my least favorite parts of the belt, two layer belt is trimming this off. And I've tried doing both the top and the bottom the same width, and I do that occasionally. Um, but then you have to make sure it's perfectly matched up or you've got a, an issue there as well. And if you're not comfortable, if you're afraid you're gonna nick into that 
top layer, then leave it off just a little bit and you can always sand the two layers to make them the same width of a belt. Now I've got the two edges trimmed up. The back's a little bit lighter. Once I edge this, before I burnish this, I will touch that up with dye and then that'll um, return the same color there as well. I'm gonna trim off, oh, that's an inch and a quarter. I'll trim off the uh, end of the belt here. And then we'll cut the belt now to its official length. Remember, it's a 42 inch belt, so I go 10 inches, so it's 52. I use three and a half inches on the bend back and six and a half inches uh, past the hole that the belt's designed to be used at. To make sure I'm centered, I'll use my wing dividers, find the center here. So there's um, two little holes here. I'll line up the tip of my English point in the inch and a half between those two there. Make sure that it's centered on the back. Double check myself. So next, I'm going to establish my stitch line around the belt here. And this is a uh, stitch groover here. It'll create a little groove for the stitching chisel to follow. You're going to say, oh, look at the lighter color. Well, surprisingly, by the time you get the thread in there and you put the sealer on there, the clear sealer, the clear sealer darkens that up and the thread's filling it up anyway. And you'll see when we get done here, it'll look fine. A tip, when you come around here to the actual tip of the belt, stop a little bit short of it. You'll see I'm a little bit short of it there. By the time I put my uh, stitching chisel in here and make that first hole and stitch over, you won't notice it. But if you overlap and cut across the end, you'll notice that. So stop just shy of it there. It works out better. All right, so now I'm going to put the uh, holes in for the stitching using the stitching chisels. These are uh, Weaver five millimeter stitching chisels. Uh, I've made a lot of belts with them. And I start at the tip and go to the back. So if there's any adjustment to be made on spacing between the uh, holes, it's on the bend over part of the belt that you don't see unless you're looking at the back of the belt. So I start with uh, one there and then I continue from there. When you're doing this, you need to tip the back top of the chisel out slightly so that it doesn't come out the, the edge of the belt. So if you could do straight up and down, that's fine. But I tend to find that the leather wants to, it wants to go the other way anyway. So I just tip it out just slightly. It's not a bunch. You don't really notice it. And if you do the same amount on each one, then the stitching on the back of the belt is going to be a, a nice straight line as well. Your first few belts probably won't be. The back won't look as nice as you would hope that it could. All right, so I've put in the uh, stitching holes along this side. I'm gonna go down the other side so like I said, I come back to the, the uh, tip and I start here. And this first hole, it, it is put in like this. So the geometry is a little bit different than the rest. Uh, I, if you put it that way, that's a little bit different. So I put it this way. So what I do is instead of driving it through and reshaping that first hole, I just put a mark and then I come over like that and I put the first two holes are there. 
So, you know, uh, I'm sure you'll find your own way that you like. Uh, I probably made a couple dozen belts before I settled in on what I thought looked best. And it's funny, most people probably, if you handed them the first belt, the 10th belt, the 20th belt, they probably aren't going to say, oh, I see how you do the tip different now. The other thing that I do is I'll, a lot of times I'll stick it in the first hole and then I'll imprint and I'll bring up, make sure I'm lined up in the center. That was some of the hardest to do when I first started making belts was to get this line straight. I mean, be open to other ideas, but you need to be your own person. All right, I'll finish this up and then we'll come back and we'll get started on the next phase. All right, I thought I would show you here, finishing up at the end. I've done down both sides. So middle stitching's done, I've done down both sides. And now I've got the round end of the belt here, the part that gets folded over. You don't really see it, but these are where the details are at. So I'll use this two-tine punch, start in that last hole, one in it, and then I'll march around here and when I get to where I'm about to the middle, then I'll come over here. And this is where, if there's any adjustment that needs to be made, I can make it here. And I'll tell you that typically, if you stretch the distance between two stitches further than normal, you'll notice that more than if it's a little bit shorter. But obviously, you'd have to be looking at the back of the belt to see if there's anything wrong with that so i'm gonna set up over here and, and um, stitch this and i need three and a half times the length of the belt for thread for each side i'm using tiger ritz of thread it's a waxed thread and it's extremely strong all right, we'll set up over here and stitch. All right, so I will saddle stitch my way down the edge of this belt. It takes a little while here at the beginning because you're pulling so much thread through the holes that'll be used further down in here. Make sure that when you're doing it, figure out what way looks best with your stitching and then use the same technique um, all the way through. What I mean by that is, if you'll notice, I'm putting the, the uh, front needle in first, the back needle in in front of that one. I'll do that the same every way. Then I've also got the thread on top of the needles if I did some on top and some below like that, it will change the way the pattern of the stitches look. That's why I went to the stitching pony is it was, it helped me keep my stitches more consistent. So I ended up with a better looking stitch line. It also sped things up because I'm not using one hand to hold the belt and using the other hand to pull the, the needles through because then you would pull one needle through and then put the other needle through all right so i've finished all of this stitching we got the stitching all finished and you can see here on the back this is where i uh, melted the ends of the thread there the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to tap it down all these threads and it gives it a, a nicer finish to the belt and it also insets the thread a little bit and helps protect it from wear. All right, next I'm going to install the hole that the buckle will use. 
and that is three and a half inches from the tip. That's where the bend back is going to be. Centered on three and a half inches. And then I'll use the tool to find the center. When I do this, even if they are spaced apart, it helps me to place the bag punch. So I'll center it on the three and a half mark, and then I'll make sure that it is lined up on those marks. So we've got that hole finished. Now I'm gonna go ahead while I'm in front of the camera and we're gonna make the holes that we'll use for the Chicago screws. Once again, you may have your own method for doing this, but this is what works for me. Okay. Next, we're going to do the edges. I use the uh, bronze tools edgers. He makes a really nice tool. This is a number three. I'm on the back right now. So we've got our radius here. I'm gonna take a little bit of time. I don't need to film at all. Sand these edges, make sure they're trued up. Get rid of any little baubles that might be there, and then we'll come back and I will buff these uh, sides. Okay, I just use a piece of denim here, an old denim, uh, a little bit of water. Good thing there's not much water in there. And this is the first burnishing that I'll do on here. Okay. There we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some sealer on this belt. So uh, a couple things I've learned. If, if I had white stitching in here, uh, I would have to make sure I use sealer first. Not only does it um, help seal so that the white thread doesn't get stained, but when you start rubbing this, the resin is gonna pick up some of the color and it would discolor the white thread. So, but being black, I don't have to worry about that. I don't know if you can see with the little foam, it's got a little bit of a, of a dye color to it. And I am being somewhat generous here with it the first time across. I want to get it worked down into all of those thread uh, stitching holes. 
And if you let this dry streaky on the first time, uh, it's almost impossible to get that straightened out. So get plenty on here the first time across. And then when I get the uh, sealer on here, then I'm gonna come back over it and keep rubbing it until I get it uh, evened out. Sorry, I'm probably off the screen here, but I just got to keep moving here until we get what we're looking for. And this is really a pretty color on this belt. I think I mentioned earlier that this belt is going to the person that won my free belt drawing. Uh, he is probably seeing the video before the belt. So I hope. Hope he's liking what he's seeing here. This is the back of the belt. Uh, I want the back of the belt look, to look as good as possible as well. If I do have a piece of leather that's got a few old bug marks or something on it, you know, nothing that takes away from the quality of the leather, maybe just an appearance, then a lot of times I'll use that on the back. I've actually had people tell me before not to do that, but they wanted that on the front. So they, they wanted to show the scars. They told me that we all have scars in life and not to hide them. One thing I don't really like about the Resoline is it is shiny, uh, but I've noticed that that tends to uh, diminish, you know, with use. And when you first get the belt, it is somewhat shiny. And I think you can reduce the uh, Resoline with some water for the first application, and that helps keep that down. But my experience is if you start reducing a, a coating, and you're reducing the effectiveness of it as well. All right, I'm gonna go hang that up. So when I, um, you probably noticed what I did earlier, I forgot to run this through to uh, have it dyed to match. That's not a problem. These are scraps from all the belts I've made here recently. And I will pull out the ones that are that same color and I'll hold it up to it, make sure that it looks good. And if it does, we'll make a loop out of it. If it doesn't, then I will, I'll dye one up and make it look good. All right, so I've cut a half inch strip of uh, leather to make the loop out of. So I need to prepare that. So the first thing I'll do is the belt <clears throat> loop obviously goes around here and then the belt fits through it so it's going to have two layers to it so to measure that I'm just going to double this over take my squared up end here bring it around and mark it with my nail of where that's going to be and then I will cut that to the length Now I need to edge this and I am going to use, this is uh, one layer thick. It doesn't need to be two layers thick. It's one layer thick. So I'm going to use a number two edger and I'm going to edge the back and the front. If you don't edge the back of it, the, the uh, rough side of the leather tends to want to fuzz out along the edges there. A lot of the prep work you do to smooth the edges if you didn't do it, it would go away over time, but obviously we want the belt to look its best when it's first received. Some stitch lines on here, and I will stitch along the edge just like I do on the belt.
All right, so I'm gonna smooth the edges like they do on the belt, and then I'll come back when we're finishing up the, uh, the stitching on this. Alrighty, we're nearing the end here. I'm gonna, I stitched along the uh, edge here on the loop, and now I'm gonna complete the loop. I'll bring these around, and then I just stitch a X pattern joining these two sides together. And I go around it twice, snugged up tight. That's it, just a simple X. I'll tie that off and then we'll get onto the belt here. Okay, so I've got the loop. This calls for black spots in between these patterns here. So I'm going to um, put holes through here and then we'll put those spots in. Then off camera, I put a second coat of Reslin on the belt. And I also put the Reslin on the belt loop before I finished making the loop. It's easier to deal with it flat. So the edges are burnished, that loop is done. And yes, I'm eyeballing it. I've tried measuring a couple different ways and it just is difficult to get a good um, centering measuring. I imprint it a little lightly, make sure that it looks good and then I and then I set it and I just drop one of those. On the smaller spots, I may install those in the top layer before I put the layers together as well. It just really depends on what's needed to get that piece of hardware to work. I'm just snapping these on here right now and then I'll come back, use the setter and set them. A little anvil that comes with the setter on the surface here. And that's how it goes in, just like that. All right, those spots are all set. I've got the buckle here. Let me grab my Chicago screws. To keep the screws from backing out, I've used various things. You can use a thread lock on it. You can use um, just about anything. I've even used just like a 
the white glue on it. And all it does is it just helps to keep the threads from backing out. Uh, today I'm using actually clear fingernail polish. So I'll come in always from the finished side of the belt. See there. Line that up. Put the back side on. And maybe it's just me, but when I do this, I of course get all the way down tight and then I line up the groove this way. It seems like it's less likely to have the, the belt rub on it and try to undo it. With that, with the uh, fairing I'll polish, I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. So that's my loop there. Go ahead and bring the screw from the front, get through there. that in finished. Now I need to measure for the uh, belt loop holes. <clears throat> I will hook the, this is where I measure from, this is where I tell my customers to measure from. I'll measure from here to Establish the the whole pattern for the belt. This one's a forty two. I use, unless the customer tells me differently, I use five holes. And the goal is for the center hole to be the one that fits the size that was ordered. lightly imprint if I'm off just a skosh it will uh, you won't see that like setting mark that I put on there obviously if you're off half a circle you'd see that but not with the way that I'm doing it Now we have a, a finished belt. The belt that the person ordered, this is actually came out a little darker than that. So I'll send a picture to make sure that this is what they want. If not, it's always good to have a, a belt made to some a variation of sizes. When I go to an artisan show, uh, it gives me something to show them instead of describing or showing pictures. So it won't go to waste, but one way or another, it'll either be uh, the person that won the free belt or I will make another one and make sure that it's the exact color. It just came out a little bit darker and that sometimes happens, you know, leather, if you've ever done woodworking, one board to the next stays a little bit different. Leather can be the same way. I uh, appreciate you following along. Please like, share, and please subscribe. 
Uh, I get a lot of views and I have a lot more views than I have subscribers. So it would really help me out if you would subscribe today. Thank you.